Hello and welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. This is a show which gets you complete wrap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. I'm Darshan Mehta. Let's welcome our experts and independent investment advisor Sharmila Joshi, Avinash Gorakshekar of Joint Rec Capital and Samir Kaldra of Target Investing join me on the show. Thank you to all for joining me on the show. Today on Hot Money, we'll discuss stocks like the diagnostic space, which is a better bet if you want to bet. You bet taking Dr. Lal or Thyrocare. What about the HDFC AMC? The company, the issue is now, uh, the, the stock is trading close to the issue price, uh, listing price, sorry. Sriram Transport has corrected over 10% from the recent highs, what's plaguing the stock. And Orbit the Pharma did an acquisition, the counters rallied almost 15% post the acquisition. What's the way ahead for the company? So that's what we'll discuss. Uh, let's start with the first one and that's the diagnostic space. Uh, Contrary trends coming in, uh, we had the management of Thyrocare today talking about you know certain issues that were there. But but Dr. Lal is up almost uh, uh, 12 to 13 percent uh, in the recent high, it's, and uh, Thyrocare is down almost 8 percent. So, uh, what's the view on the diagnostic space and which is a preferred stock? We'll ask Agesh. So, Sharmila, I'll start with you. Uh, any view on the diagnostic space as such? Well, honestly, not on the space as such. But yes, I have looked at both the stocks uh, since we were discussing them today, and I actually prefer Thyrocare. Okay. Uh, because you know, I think that yes, uh, uh, this uh, sort of listed uh, space within uh, mm. this pathology labs, uh, I think the main issue for them has been that perhaps growth has not come as fast as uh, you know that uh, uh, more people haven't gone to the organized mm. players as compared to the unorganized players as what was perceived earlier. Uh, but that said, I think uh, they've had like decent numbers and uh, the traction is there going ahead. But I think Thyrocare, I, the only reason why I like it is because they also have this whole uh, imaging uh, mm. business that uh, they can sort of, uh, that they have that play within their, uh, uh, whatever, their portfolio. And I think, you know, that's something that is not absolutely uh, dependent on, you know, how many mm. labs you have and you can sort of outsource it and so on. And uh, you can put up more imaging labs and mm. uh, that has a better, it's a better margin business as well. So that's the only reason. So I prefer Thyrocare at current valuations to Pat. Um, okay. Va Valuation-wise, uh, Thyrocare is preferred. What about you, Avinash? Uh, what view do you share? <coughs> no, I think clearly, uh, you know, within both the players, I think Dr. Lal will show a stronger earnings growth. The first quarter number, if you compare Thyrocare with Dr. Lal, I think uh, Thyrocare had a very muted uh, quarter one kind of profit, and I think the conference <coughs> call commentary was also quite uh, moderately cautious. In fact, the management guided that possibly some margin compression could happen. I would believe that. Dr. Dr. Lal definitely stands a better chance. The Kolkata unit is now going to uh, get into traction. My sense is the second half could show a stronger earnings growth. So overall, uh, although valuations are not cheap, uh, Darshan, I would definitely look at any dip to look into buying Dr. Lal. But Thyrocare is trading at much cheaper valuations. It is. Uh, it is trading, but then the markets are looking at a very uh, you know mid-teen kind of uh, earnings growth. At least uh, for FY19, I'm looking at a 8 to 9 percent earnings growth, and FY20 could be about 17, 18 percent. But if you compare it with Dr. Lal, Darshan, our sense is that Dr. Lal could possibly show a strong 20 to 25 percent growth even on an expansion. Is, is the top line uh, slowdown only concern that you have with Thyrocare? I think uh, clearly, you know, because as Sharmila pointed out, the imaging business is definitely getting ramped up. But I think the real numbers from the imaging business would be reflected, you know, uh, probably in FY20 and beyond. Hmm. FY19, I don't think you're going to see any big earnings kind of, uh, you know, trigger from the imaging business. Okay, what about you, Samir? What's your view on this overall space and uh, the companies in particular? So overall space looks expensive uh, to me, uh, whether you take Thyro or Dr. Lal. If the preference is there, I would pick a Dr. Lal uh, because of mainly two reasons. One, it has a much more larger cash flow generation capability as compared to Thyro. The working capital is much more smaller cycle as compared to Thyro. So they have around 450 <coughs> crore cash sitting on the books. So, and secondly is their revenue per test is around 300 rupees mm. as compared to Thyro is around 200. Mm. And their volume is around 34 million tests annually and Thyro is around 14 million. So the comparatively favors the Dr. Lal. The valuation might favor a Thyro over mm. uh, being cheap, but there are certain reasons of Thyro being cheap. Mm. So I think that working capital cycle improvement will only result into a better valuation. Okay, uh, but but overall, uh, if, if given a choice, you say Dr. Lal, but uh, overall, what's your view on the sector? Is is the sector poised to grow? If someone wants to yeah. make an investment, would you would you encourage him to make an investment either in, in Dr. Lal as you preferred yeah. or stay away from the sector? So I think it's better to stay away from the sector for now because it's not seen a cheaper valuation system. Uh, now the Dr. Lal expansion is over and there are certain, you know, these are very 
market share led kind of a businesses and it needs constant cash flow requirement hmm. so i think there initially i think first two years of maturity of being listed i think you should stay away and see the numbers kick in okay uh, avinash is it a valid concern that you know even if you're looking at the entire diagnostic space uh, uh, competi- the, uh, the the benefit that you know people spoke about that it will shift to the organized player has not happened it's pre- predominantly uh, an unorganized market that will uh, that is uh, uh, ruling the roost and and that will continue uh, so overall on the sector if uh, would you would you like the sector or would you avoid the sector no i think uh, your point is right that you know the migration from the unorganized to the organized sector might take a little longer than what the street expected and i think this was evident from what thyrocare's management commentary was but uh, if you look at the performance <coughs> of uh, dr lal uh, clearly you know volume growth has been to the extent of 25% in quarter 1 i think uh, a 6% drop in realization so i think market share gains have been made at the co- cost of prices mm-hmm. and going forward i think uh, most of the unorganized sector players are obviously getting shifted and uh, you know uh, dr lal is talking about organizing and regrouping lot of the unorganized sectors in their territory i would believe that you know somebody has got a two year plus kind of call should definitely look at the sector because this is a sector where uh, you know looking at the kind of lifestyle diseases uh, this is definitely going to grow margin uh, pressure would be there but if you can expand your volumes and obviously take care of your working capital as samir mentioned then i think uh, you definitely have a good business model okay and chamila any view you like thyro can any view on dr lal as such no you know just to uh, actually uh, address what you were talking of a little earlier I, it's not a space that i like much because yes i think that the shift to organized players has not happened as fast hmm. as uh, what was expected and the competition is also growing very fast hmm. so you know it is that kind of a business where uh, you know that there is there are good volumes and there is a hmm. very large addressable market but it's not for me a very hmm. uh, exciting business to be uh, hmm. looking at because i'm not seeing that you know uh, uh, that kind of growth hmm. that was earlier expected uh, coming in so which is why i prefer thyro care because i think the valuations are cheaper plus they have this uh, imaging business and but overall I, you know as you said p- perhaps for me it's not uh, a space that i would look at very actively okay so that's the view that's coming in uh, but not the space that you know our guest would look at actively but uh, one one of our guests shamila likes thyro care uh, uh, the other to go would go in for a dr lal as an investment opportunity uh, the next stock we want to talk about is hdfc amc now uh, it had a stellar listing heavy over subscription uh, went up all the way close to 2000 rupees uh, the correction in the broader markets got an opportunity for the counter to come back uh, to levels where it got listed again so that's the view it's almost at 1700 rupees now uh, what should one do on hdfc mutual fund are the valuations expensive or is this correction a good opportunity to start accumulating this counter we'll ask again so avinash uh, again come back uh, people who wanted to buy on the opening day uh, and couldn't and the counter rallied now again it's at that price probably within striking distance uh, is it a good stri- time to start buying uh, hfc mutual fund or you think there's more potential of correction it's too expensive yet no i think darshan uh, looking at the kind of track record hdfc amc has you know in the last 4 to 5 years plus looking at the q1 numbers a 21% growth in income a uh, 25% growth in the profit and most importantly uh, you know they uh, currently have a aum of roughly about 3 lakh crore so our sense is that over the next 2 years if somebody were to take an investment call the aum is definitely going to grow at a commendable pace and most importantly uh, you know they have maintained con- continuously a very strong uh, roe of almost 40 odd percent so i think incremental business is definitely going to happen at a slightly cheaper opex cost and our sense is that they are amongst the top uh, mutual funds you know catering to largely the retail category so clearly i think somebody who's taking a longer term call should definitely look at uh, accumulating the stock because i wouldn't be surprised that possibly in the next 2 years you know the aum basket for not only the indian mutual fund industry but for uh, hdfc amc in particular could possibly see a 2x or a 3x kind of jump what so, about yeah what about valuations See I think valuations are pricey I think uh, Darshan this is definitely not deniable but I think clearly uh, I would believe that you know any price correction if at all if it happens I think uh, you know a, a pedigree like HDFC uh, management definitely the market should obviously like to pay a significant premium and I think if you look at the top 2 top 3 names clearly this is one play which I think could possibly outperform over the longer term so I don't mind paying a premium for this kind of stock Okay Samir uh, your view on HDFC mutual fund So I would not try or uh, uh, right now invest in this uh, because the valuations are high the margins have been highest in the history what has been disclosed to uh, the last year <laughs> inflows and the sip 
flows were beneficial to, beneficial to the mutual fund industry. But I think if any uh, any downfall kicks in, the valuations will correct drastically because the outflows don't stop the way the inflows didn't stop. Mm -hmm. So I think over there, there's a lot of risk in the business because the more the equity proportion contributes to your uh, financial side, the more risk you get into a outflow. And I think on the SEBI side, if you see, they are more talking about and they are more orating about the AMC's earning uh, higher income and any kind of a regulation over there or kind of a restrictions over there on how you can earn will restrict the amount of earnings in this industry. So I think this kind of a valuation right now for uh, this kind of an industry, I think it's not justified. The industry, so uh, are you saying that you know similar concerns are there uh, for uh, Reliance Nippon also because that's trading at a much cheaper valuation than HDFC? See, if you see the industry, the concern is throughout. Uh, Reliance AMC has a cheaper valuation because the margins are lower hmm. and the cash flow generating out of the business is much lower as compared to HGFC. So I think again that low valuation is justified <coughs> but I think I'll still st stay away from the AMC business. Okay, but both of them you would yeah. stay away. What about you Shamila? We own HGFC AMC. So I probably wouldn't buy immediately because I think uh, there is still room for uh, hmm. the price uh, stock price to come down. But yes, I think I broadly agree that uh, it, it is uh, it is a good investment. Uh, largely because I think uh, uh, the kind of, uh, um, you know, the, their overall uh, earnings picture is much better than their uh, sort of their peer set and it has always been so and which is why it gets the uh, premium valuation. Uh, and, you know, I think if you're a long-term investor and you're looking at that, you know, compounding kind of a growth story and if that's the kind of stock that you want, then I think HDF, HDFC AMC is certainly a stock that uh, can be looked at. So I would wait for a little bit more correction, but yes, I think in, uh, basically I agree that you can start accumulating. Okay, and what about you in terms of uh, RNAM versus uh, HDFC mutual fund? Would you venture into, you, you like HDFC mutual fund, now value, if you're playing for the sector, would you also accumulate Reliance Nippon or would that be an avoid? No, I think clearly, uh, you know, looking at the overall size of the market, I think clearly even Reliance uh, Nippon could be a good opportunity. But I think uh, th this kind of stock or any exposure here, Darshan, could ideally be over the next, say, one to two years. Because I think clearly SIPs have been growing quite steadily. And as Samir mentioned, you know, if there are some sudden shocks on the SIP front, there could be a little bit of softness on these stocks. But overall, I think longer term, I think there's no doubt that this business is going to be very scalable and very profitable, you know, from a long term perspective. Okay. But but any reason why Reliance Nippon has been underperforming, even as a stock? So I think clearly uh, markets have been, you know, uh, clearly been little cautious of the Anil Ambani Group companies, and I think clearly uh, that is probably one of the key reasons. I think if you look at the size of the AUM and the margins, as Samir pointed out, I think uh, more than that, I think it's the group uh, vision and strategy, which I think you know probably markets are clearly slightly cautious on that group. That's why probably a lower multiple and a lower discounting <coughs> for this. Group. Okay, uh, you agree that uh, issues with uh, RNAM in this case? See, uh, issues, as he said, uh, even if you see the division of the AUM, Arnam has more of debt portfolio, which is a lower end earning kind of a portfolio which they have. And SGFC has more equity. So even a 2 to 3% difference of equity and debt creates at least a 5% EPS difference in the whole system. So I think over there, that kind of system is there. And plus, as a cash flow generating, as a company, SGFC is much more better cash flow generating than uh, Reliance Mutual Fund as of now. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on HDFC Mutual Fund. Uh, it, it's more like a positional long-term bet uh, at this point of time, but at this, this level, valuations seem to be much on the higher side, so correction uh, could not be ruled out on uh, HDFC AMC. Let's start with the next one, and that is Shridam Transport. Uh, uh, it, it's corrected significantly. It's down half, it's hard, down hardly in trade today. But it's corrected almost 15% uh, or almost 150 rupees to 200 rupees uh, from the recent highs. Uh, so the thing we're asking is that initially once it had it was because of some accounting issue. But uh, this time around there seems to be no reason. But we'll ask a guest uh, what they believe on it. Uh, Shanvila, any reason? What, what's, what's gone wrong with Sriram Transport? It's, it's corrected suddenly and it was, it's been a vicious drop that's coming. <coughs> Yeah, you know, I think it's just to do with the fact that uh, that whole uh, issue that they had with, uh, uh, you know, uh, standing as a guarantor for uh, SVL and then the stock corrected so much at that point in time and then you saw it sort of bounce back up 
So I think it's just sort of adjusting itself because if you look at it from a numbers perspective, it seems fine to me. Okay. So I am not really sensing any concern there because if you look at the numbers, whether it is the kind of AUM growth they've done or the names, I think that picture has been fine. So I think it's just that because you know it sort of bounced back from that you know correction so rapidly, and now we are overall seeing a correction in the mid cap space. It's just that I'm not, I don't really read too much more into this correction. Okay, that's the view that's coming in. Uh, Samir, Shridam Transport, what seems to be the issue? So, uh, issue first is the disclosures which came in. So, that removes a little corporate governance premium which you <coughs> receive. So, that might have gone out on the medium extent also. If you <coughs> see the books, the growth is there. But the worry which I have is previously also which they showed. In the rate hike cycles, uh, their NPAs really increase because their majority comes through pre-owned CV financing, not the new CV financing. Mm. And over there, any which way, the fuel costs have gone up. Mm. So the delinquencies increase drastically when the rate hikes and the fuel hikes go up. Mm. So I think that kind of a relation also sees in the business system. Mm. So I think I would stay away even as of now. Okay, and Avinash, your view, what seems to have gone wrong for Shuram? No, I think clearly two issues. One is uh, the fear that interest rate hikes could possibly impact, uh, you know, the asset quality. But I think clearly, uh, as Sharmila pointed out, I think, you know, numbers at least in the first quarter have been pretty steady. 22% uh, growth on the AUM and a 20% growth in revenue. So I would believe that, you know, once the SVL issue is sorted out, the management has clearly mentioned in the con call that, uh, you know, probably by FY19 end, you know, they should be able to sort out this issue and they would not have any financial liabilities. I think this could be an overhang on the stock at least in the short term. But longer term, I think hopefully, you know, uh, the Axel norm issue plus the interest rate hike issue, I think these are issues which are going to keep the stock slightly underperform, you know, for maybe one or two quarters. But longer term, I think this definitely is a scalable model. Okay, that's the view that's coming in. We'll talk more about Sriram Transport uh, in detail. Uh, uh, what triggers are you looking at in Sriram Transport? You like it for the long term. Uh, what are the triggers going ahead? See, I think clearly, uh, I would believe that, you know, uh, hopefully if the Axel norm issue gets sorted out, maybe the second half of FY19 is not as bad as what people anticipate. Uh, the second quarter is going to be slightly bad in the sense that uh, the management has also uh, uh, expects that, you know, some amount of pressure would be there on their NIMS. I would believe that, uh, you know, apart from the SVL issue, if uh, the asset quality continues to be stable, in fact, if it probably moves up slightly uh, much more in this quarter, then that could be a little disappointment. So I would be looking at asset quality and the kind of uh, AUM growth and the top line growth because top line growth could get impacted considering the Axel issue and the overall headwinds in the space look to be challenging. Okay, uh, you gave your view on why you believe that the stock fell but uh, if someone is looking to accumulate this counter would you uh, recommend or would you wait for a correction? Well, uh, everything seems to be correcting so it's, uh, it's always a good uh, it makes good sense to wait especially when because we are in this kind of a flux just now but I think I like the stock you know overall I think you know this is again one of those <laughs> Uh, stories because they are looking at sort of uh, second hand uh, mm. financing it doesn't uh, really get very much impacted by the cv cycle mm. per se or what is happening in that overall the larger market and it seems to it's, mm. it has you know over the years grown at a steady space so i think the recent overhang uh, you know this recent correction has been because of this overhang from this svl issue uh, but I think once that is sorted, uh, definitely it's a stock that I would consider. In fact, it has sort of corrected from the uh, target that I had on the stock. So, uh, in that sense, it is a stock that I like and at lower levels, definitely. Any other NBFC it. that you like in this space? Uh, in the, in the uh, car financing space? In the car for NBFC space, any stock that you like in the SBFC? I like Equitas. Equitas would be your top pick? Yeah. Okay, any reason? I like the results and you know there was an expectation uh, you know a couple of quarters back uh, the numbers were not good but they put in certain things into place and the expectation was that it would mm. start reflecting in the bottom line we are seeing that and uh, in terms of the scale up that is done to a small finance you know small mm. bank and uh, the kind of how they've changed their book all that is now in place so I think uh, there's good growth going ahead. And Samir uh, if you want to pick up you don't like Sriram anything that you like in the NBFC space? So NBFC space I'm staying away because of the rate hike cycle being aggressive now and we see further two more rate hikes kicking in because of the rupee and all these factors. So I think I would stay away from NBFCs. If I want to have a CV financing issue as an exposure, I would go through Anderson Bank. Okay. And uh, but, uh, is the concern that you have valid on banks also or only in the NBFCs that you're cautious? 
of the rate hikes kicking. Yeah, whatever. You're cautious on NBFCs. So, are you cautious on banks also? So, or are you, uh, no, banks are still able to create that thing because the deposit side is able to retract that. Hmm. So I think that balance is much more stable at the bank side. NBFCs are uh, volatile in these kind of circumstances and the NPA recognition go, go much <coughs> more stronger. Hmm. So I think over there that kind of a delinquency levels go higher in the NBFCs when the rate hike kicks in and in the banks it still stabilizes. Okay, so that's the view that we're getting in on Sri Ram Transport and the last stock we're going to talk about is pretty much the stock of yesterday, also the stock of today. Orbindo Pharma announced an acquisition uh, for $900 million, so it was done at close to one-time sales. Uh, on, the, on, on the flip side, the only thing is that, you know, the balance sheet gets stretched for Orbindo Pharma, but that happens in FY20. But what's the view on Orbindo Pharma going ahead? Uh, is it a good acquisition? Uh, after uh, almost a 16, 17% move, would you still accumulate? Because it's one of the cheapest pharma stocks that you have. Uh, we'll ask our guest, uh, Samit, Orbindo Pharma, uh, do you think that one should accumulate? So I would like to stay away, uh, even furthermore, post the deal. Because if you see the deal, uh, it is around a 0.6 billion first half sales. Mm. And last year it was 1.5 billion. So, uh, and if you read the commentary of Novartis, according to the business they have, they are selling off, it's more like they are not able to see any future growth in that business, or they don't have that kind of a cash flow, which it requires, because the pricing pressure is very heavy in that business. Mm. It's around a 15, 20 percent kind of a dip annually, mm. past three years or four years. So that kind of a system being sold, I I don't think so. Orbindo can really pick it up and reverse it very mm. quickly. If you even see the valuations, I think it'll take five to six years to repay this kind of a mm. whole acquisition cost for Orbindo. So I think I would like to stay away. Okay. This short term jump which had to come, I think is now over. So I would like to stay away and see a couple of years. Okay, Avinash, what did you make of the deal? No, I think deal definitely seems to be uh, good in the longer term considering that uh, dermatology business is definitely uh, capable of being scaling up. Uh, the management expects that you know its uh, cost uh, uh, you know kind of uh, control mechanisms and plus the kind of scaling up it uh, expects to do i think uh, overall o only over the next two years uh, darshan we could see some you know uh, kind of factual results coming in from these acquisitions and in the short term as samir pointed out the debt equity definitely gets stretched overall i think uh, if you look at it from a relative basis it has been performing well compared to the other indian players which operates in the us market so all said and done you know it's a good hold at the current level the stock has moved up i wouldn't like to buy in at the current level but yes definitely i would hold on considering the fact that this acquisition is definitely going to add uh, some sort of earnings growth you know uh, post fy20 okay and Sharmila, what did you make so of i that? broadly agree with uh, avinash i think that it's for me also the stock is a hold and i think that uh, uh, market certainly seems to like the deal so let's go with that uh, but I think that overall I'm positive on uh, pharma space. So mm. while I think mm. that for Aurobindo, first quarter numbers were sort of muted at best. But I think that uh, because of what's happening <coughs> with the rupee and you know everything that the sector has been through, the concerns stay common for mm. all pharma companies in terms of US pricing mm. and things like that. But the sector seems to be coming into its own. So for me, Aurobindo is a whole. And what's your topic in the pharma space? I continue to like uh, Sun Pharma. Okay, despite all the issues that have come in in the new... I feel that they're handling them. So, you know, if you're just talking from a returns perspective, I think Sun Pharma. Sun Pharma gives you the best return. Yeah. Uh, Vinash, uh, in the pharma space, your uh, topic? See, I think uh, I would believe the large caps continue to be uh, better positioned. Something like a Sun or a Lupin, I think clearly, uh, you know, look would look definitely attractive from a longer term perspective. I think clearly Lupin has also corrected significantly. And I think except for the fact that maybe one or two quarters may be bad, if one were to take it to a longer term view, at least the next, uh, you know, two years, I would believe that this could be a good time to accumulate. Okay, and what about you in the pharma space? What do so you like? So our top holding is Sun Pharma. Hmm. So over there, we've stopped buying at these prices uh, because we've taken the weights we wanted. So I think Sun Pharma, whatever the issue has come out of those two issues, I think are will take time or might take time from my point of view. But others can be resorted out, and I think it's. If the reaction had to come, it would have come today. So I think now the market is also accepting the changes. Okay, so that's the view that's coming in on the pharma space. Uh, with that, uh, uh, it's a wrap on today's Hot Money. Sharmila, thank you so thank much you. for coming in. Uh, Avinash as well as Sameer, thank, thank you so much for coming in. Ask BQ comes up next. Stay tuned to Bloomberg Kunich.